Hello, my friend. Welcome to another video. My name is Tammy. Thank you for joining me on my channel. I am honored to have you here to learn. So today is all about paper. Can we use paper as a surface to pour on? Now you may be saying to yourself, Tammy, why in the heck would I ever want to pour on a piece of paper? Well, let me show you what pouring on a piece of paper could open up for us. The world of possibilities that it allows us to explore. Before I start today's video, I have to show you something. Check this out. I don't know if you saw that light up. I got myself a heated jacket for the Northeast here because it is miserably cold. So I just wanted to show you that. I think it's so cool. Not a lot of people know that they have these things. So I'm spreading the news to you. All right, so before we get started, I have eggshells here. If you like to do some of the projects that I do in my videos, start saving your eggshells because we're gonna be using those in the next week or two. Uh, once you crack your egg open, you're going to rinse it out and then you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna feel like this. You're gonna feel a slimy skin. You're gonna peel that skin out and then rinse them off and let them dry. And these are gonna be awesome for texture. Hey, it's reusing, it's recycling, it's free. You already bought the eggs, right? So, and it makes an awesome crackle effect. So start saving your eggshells. So anyway, pouring on paper. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways. I'm gonna to explain to you how to attach it. Um, and what this does for us is it opens up a world of possibilities as far as the background that you're pouring on. It adds some interest. Now, I will say that you need to do this on some type of a wood canvas or a wood panel. Yeah, you can try it on regular canvas, but I have a feeling you're gonna get a lot of air bubbles. So putting it on wood is the best thing. Now, I said opens up a ton of possibilities at any craft stores, Michael's, uh, Hobby Lobby, they sell scrapbooking paper. This was a dollar, okay? It's really thick paper. It's not like a sheet of paper where it's paper thin. Although they do sell those types, I would not recommend getting that type unless you resin the surface first before you pour on it. And I'm going to explain that further in a minute. But they have these pretty, look at that. That would look stunning as a background for a painting. I have one here where I used actual ribbon um, from the ribbon department. I'll show you what it looks like. So this one here, I got a Hobby Lobby in the ribbon department. So you can apply something like this. It's the perfect width for an eight by 10, or you can cut up pieces of this and glue them down. Uh, I mean, look at the possibilities for backgrounds. I've also done a lot of artwork using holographic paper, uh, iron-on paper from Cricut. There's all different types of designs and, and it's just, so much fun. So there's two ways of doing this, right? We have the way where you put down something like this material that has a little texture to it. You would want to possibly add a layer of resin like I did here, especially if you want to get a 3D effect when you do your acrylic pour on top. Or if you're not a resin user, you can glue down one of those thicker pieces of scrapbook paper, like I said, and just pour right on top, like I'm going to do today with this one. I'm gonna do both of these for you so you can see the difference. So this is a wood board, and all I did was glued the piece of paper to it first, let it dry, and then I took some black paint and just kind of blacked out of an area. I was gonna do something different with this one, but I've changed my mind, so that's why it's black. You don't have to black it out if you don't want to. Um, 
So, I mean, you're going to get all different kinds of possibilities for a background. And I think it just makes the art so much more interesting. So, as I mentioned, you can either just glue it down and pour right on top. If it's a thick piece of paper that's flat like this with no texture, really, you really don't have to seal it in. It's not going to mess with the flow of the paint. Something like this, however, where I got all these grooves, I wanted to resin it first so that the paint would just glide sm smoothly over the surface. So, tons of possibilities and a ton of fun. Now, I did go ahead and do this step first because it's self-explanatory. You don't need to see me put glue on a wood panel and press a piece of paper down. That's all I did. You can use, if you don't want to have any glue, you can use Mod Podge, gloss medium, anything that will work as a glue, all right? And this one here, I did the same thing. I used actual gloss medium because it's a lot thicker than glue to glue this uh, first paper down. Then I did one coat of resin over the top. That's it. So for the first one, that silver one with the black center that I just showed you, I'm going to do a pour using one of my new little shovels there. Okay. I'm going to mix up the paint. I'm going to show you how I'm mixing up the paint. And I'm going to just do a nice pour through the center, tilt a little bit, and have this beautiful negative space on both sides. When it is cured, dried, um, I will resin it personally, but if you don't want to resin, you can varnish. And again, these from Blick make an awesome surface to pour on, but you can get MDF uh, from Home Depot, whatever you want to use, all right? So how am I mixing the paints today? I'm going to mix them with just a pouring medium, and I'm going to put a little dash of GAC 800 in it. Now, I don't know if this is absolutely necessary, but because I'm pouring on the paper, I really don't want to take any chances of cracking, so I'm just going to put a little squirt of this into every color. Again, it may not even be necessary, but I thought I would be a little cautious and do it anyway. So the pouring medium I'm going to use is Artist Loft. I get that at Michael's and I love this pouring medium. And the reason why I'm using this pouring medium and that is all is because I do not want many cells in this painting. If I wanted to get some cells, I would add a little Floetrol also. But for today, we don't want that. I'm going to do a monochromatic kind of painting on that silver background first for you. And the colors I'm going to be using will be Windsor Newton, Windsor Blue, Atelier's Blue Black Indigo, Blue Gray by Liquitex, Greenish Blue from Amsterdam, uh, Black Iris Prism Pour, True Silver Prism Pour, Water Dragon Prism Pour, and Frostbite Prism Pour. I will also be using Artist Loft Titanium White Level 1. This one does not give any problems with our pores. And as a matter of fact, the one that does give the problems in the, the tall bottle only gives problems when you do something like a Dutch pour or a swipe. Other than that, it works really well in all the other pours. So, and my theory for that is when you're doing a Dutch pour, you're violently churning the colors together because you're using the blow dryer. It's mixing everything together and it really makes that mix in a lot with the other colors and there's a chemical reaction. Same with a swipe. You're putting it down and you're swiping that white all through those colors and it, they're blending together. However, when you do a ring pour and it's kind of separated a little bit by the rings, it behaves beautifully. Um, a straight pour, dirty pour, flip cup, it, it works fine. 
So for all of those, I will use it still. It works perfect for me. But for this today, again, because I'm pouring on paper, I want it to be extra careful. So I'm going to use this one. You may also be wondering what this is. These are some cookie cutter dough cutters that I may use on that smaller green panel to pour my paint into and to make some vine looking um, shapes on that canvas. Not sure yet though. So prism pour is going to be mixed like any other acrylic paint. It's an acrylic paint. Although the name is prism pour, it is not a ready to pour paint. Let me tell you why that is. Originally when color art was going to make this brand, this line, they were going to make a ready to pour paint. However, plans changed and it's just an acrylic paint. So you do not pour out of the bottle with these. These need to be mixed like any of these. So these will be mixed the same with the Artist Loft pouring medium and a dash of GAC 800, okay? And I should have shaken my bottle. Got to shake up the paint, Tammy. Let me get rid of that because it was not mixed. And these are the most delicious colors you will ever see. There is a discount in the description for 20% off. So let me show you what frostbite looks like. Beautiful baby blue with a blue shimmery goodness to it. If you don't have Artist Loft Pouring Medium, you can use Liquitex. You can use Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish will work good. Or you can use your Floetrol if you want. Whatever you usually mix your paints with, it's totally up to you. But like I said, with chemistry, if you want cells, you have to have the right ingredients. If you don't want them, you have to have the right ingredients. I do not want them, so I'm not going to add any Floetrol. Floetrol promotes cells, and I'm talking about American Floetrol. Okay, so if you don't want them, don't use something like a Floetrol. Got something in there. So that's the consistency of my paint flows off the stick and leaves a mound. I got to get that lump out of there. Freeloader. I'm going to have to charge. I'm going to have to claim it on my taxes pretty soon here. All right, there you go. So I want you to see that really close. Those are the consistency of all of my paints. And like I said, I'm just going to put a little dash One, two, three, four, five, six. Six drops of the GAC. That's it. That is how I'm going to mix all my colors. Alrighty, so as mentioned, I have a kind of monochromatic palette here. I'll show you each color quick. This is just Artist Loft Black Flow Acrylic. And this will be a really good example if you can see it. The thickness of the paint. So then I have Frostbite. This is a prism pour color. I already showed that to you. Then we have Black Iris, another prism pour color. I like to turn on the flash so you can see the sparkle in these babies. She's a beauty. Then we have the Water Dragon, Prism Pour Color. Beauteous. And then the last Prism Pour Color I'm using is the True Silver. Oh, 
Okay. Then I have greenish blue Amsterdam. This here is Windsor Blue by Windsor Newton. The Blue Black Indigo by Atelier. And then the gray, Blue Gray by Liquitex. Okay, I showed you how I mixed them. I have my little shovel here. I'm going to layer the paints in this little shovel. And then I'm going to pour them out. But first, before I do that, I'm going to put down a black base over this area so that when I tilt, my colors will move a little more easy for me, okay? All right, so for the sake of time, this is a very long video because I have done two paintings, multiple steps. So I'm going to speed up a lot of the repetitive stuff. This is just me putting the black base down. Now I'm going to tell you this. Because I had used a canvas that I had previously planned on doing something different on, it really broke up my mojo because I felt confined to that area. I, If I didn't have that black area painted, I would have poured a totally different way. So that's the first thing. However, even though I'm not happy with the way this comes out, I was able to save it in the end. So stay tuned for that. So I'm just puddling the colors into the little scoop. Now, when I originally poured this out, this was the first mistake I made. I should have done a dirty pour in the shovel because when I pour it out here, you're going to see it's just too uniform, the lines. There's, there's not enough movement in it for me, which led me to having to add multiple dirty pours on top of it, ring pours, dirty pours. I, I end up doing a lot of little mini pours to save this, but um, I should have did something a little bit different in the shovel with the paint before I did this, before I released it. I just think it would have made it a little more interesting. However, I had to keep reminding myself that this is just a test to see how pouring on top of a piece of paper works. It is about the art, but it isn't about the art. So needless to say, you can definitely pour on this type of paper because I put so much paint on this and it did not soak it up or anything. And as I had mentioned previously, this surface right here was not protected by anything. It was just glued paper to a wood canvas. So although I speed up a lot of the video from this point forward, I like to show you areas where it's real time. That that you just saw me doing was real time. That's how slow I was moving it. This here is sped up. I just don't want to confuse people to think that you got to tilt really fast. Um, so just realize I will show you in regular time how slow I am going and then I will speed it up. So I poured my paint in the cup and because they're thicker, they're not really blending together a lot. So I decided to take my little spoon there and just swirl them to almost marble them in the cup. And now I'm doing just some mini ring pours, some ribbons, just kind of going with the flow, moving my hand in whatever motion it, it tells me to go in. Uh, you know, there, there wasn't really a plan here. I just knew that I needed to get some kind of movement and composition going in this painting because it was just, I, I'll tell you something, I'll be totally honest with you. When I start a painting and it doesn't like go my way right away, I start getting very discouraged. And then 
all hell breaks loose. I start pouring all kinds of stuff on there. And, uh, you know, 99% of the time I'm able to fix it, but there's those times where, you know, it's just gotta, it's gotta go. <laughs> I'm going to let you watch the rest of this part here uh, in quiet, and then I will be back. One good thing about using prism pour is even if you fail, it's still sparkly and pretty. <laughs> so I'll give you a close up here really quick. Look at that sparkle. Oh, I wish it was dark in here. That is literally a rainbow of sparkle. Definitely matches that background that I almost completely covered up, but we'll let it dry. I'll show you the final result, and if I have time, I'll try to include how I zhuzhed this up with resin, but I'm not promising you'll see that at the end. Then again, I'm filming this in the past, so I'm telling you right now on the screen if I'm <laughs> going to show it to you or not. So, look at that. It's so pretty, this sparkle. Got some really nice lacing here. This is going to be a piece called Moody Seas, that's for sure. <laughs> and apparently we will have a silver shoreline and a silver sky. <laughs> but anyway, let's get on to the next one quick. Okay, so for this one here, I have a plethora of colors, okay? <laughs> And don't mind this, this scratches down here. It's going to be covered. Okay, so for this, I have wintergreen prism pour. I'll show you those first. Wintergreen, blue velvet. I think I would know these names by now. That is blue velvet. Then I have, I know this one, pink diamonds. This color is fantastic. Twilight Violet. 4K that you all know. This here is a color called Quiller's Violet. It's the blackest purple that I know of, and it comes from TriArt. And then the other color I have here is an aquamarine color. And that is by Lumiere. Pearlescent Turquoise by Lumiere. 
So what my plan here is, is the shovel. I'm going to fill it. I have white to put in there. And I'm going to cover this bottom first. I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to come up and do some kind of a swirly do. Okay? Alrighty, so this time you're going to notice I pour my paints a little differently. So I'm just kind of puddling them on top of each other and I'm kind of pouring them from a little bit high so they mix a little tiny bit, not a lot. Not that that makes a difference, but, you know, it just will mix them a little bit more. And you can see how much better that works than layering them in the scoop. They kind of blend together more nice. I love that right there, that little loop-de-loo, <laughs> swirly-do, as I said. Um, I'm just putting some color in there, tilting it around, and try not to lose all of this background. So doing a pour on top of paper, the best kind of technique to use, in my opinion, would be something like this with a shovel or a dustpan, um, a ring pour, something that doesn't require a certain composition. Like a Dutch pour, you would never be able to do because you need to be able to blow the Dutch pour out and to be able to do that, you need paint underneath your colors, which would make you cover up the entire background. You could swipe, however, that's another one. And, um, you know, just think about it. Use your imagination. I'm sure there's a ton of other things that you can do. All righty. Show you these colors. We'll let that dry. And then we'll do some beautiful resin on top, but you don't have to do that again. The only thing is, is if you work on a resin surface, and you want to pour paint on it, you're going to have to resin the top. You can't varnish it. It won't stick. And it will dull out the resin. Look at those colors. Woo-wee! All right, so let me let these dry. It's kind of like, you know, a paint splash. Think of, think of the painting like this. You splash a cup of paint on it. Right? I think that one's pretty cool. All right, so let's see what comes up next. The dry results. All righty, so it's the next day, and this is literally dry already. Now, why is that? Why did it dry so quick when my paintings on a canvas take days, sometimes a week to dry? The reason for that is, A, because I use pouring medium, and B, because I poured on this resin surface and it dries a lot quicker. Pouring medium really speeds up the drying process. Floetrol really slows it down. Most of my paintings have Floetrol in them. So, you know, it takes longer. But with a pouring medium, literally, even if you're pouring just on a regular canvas, you know, two days maybe, three days at the most, uh, it'll be dry. So, dried fine. Now, I want to explain one thing to you really quick about any type of paint that has a shimmer to it. 24 karat gold by deco art, prism pour by color art, folk art, any of those. Sometimes when you look at the paint, it'll look grainy almost. What you are seeing is not a fault. What you are seeing is the mica dried in the paint. So you're going to see here... how it looks almost like sandy and gritty. But once I put either the varnish or the resin on top of that, it is going to be all sparkle. So don't let that mislead you. Then here is the other painting that I did, okay? That I covered 90% of my beautiful background and dried fine, no cracks, Absolutely perfect. So I'm going to take this one now and turn this one into an ocean pour. And then this one, I'm going to put a layer of resin through it. And I'm going to use some colorants mixed into the resin 
to just do a little bit of detail work on it. That's it. I'm going to leave it alone. I like the look of the paint spilling out onto that pretty background. And so I don't want to cover up too much of it. Plus, this paint is going to sparkle like crazy once that resin hits. So colors I'm going to be using mixed directly into my KS resin are going to be from color art. Well, one of them is from, two of them is from color art and the rest are from Artists Till Death. I'll tell you the names. This is what resin arts, um, I'm sorry. This is what color arts resin line looks like. Huge mica chunks that melt into the resin. The sparkle is unbelievable, and I will show you this one. It's called Purple Galaxy. Resin Art is the title of the product line. So we're going to be using that one, and then I'm going to, in the ocean pour that I'm going to do, I'm going to use some of their Blingit Milky Way Galaxy Diamond, which is stunning, okay? Well, this will create the most powerful shimmer you've ever seen. Now, one thing to note about Color Art and their Blingit line, if it says Blingit on the label, you can use this in resin or in acrylic pouring. So any color under that Blingit category can be used in both. Resin Art cannot be used in acrylic pouring and primary elements cannot be used in resin art unless with the primary elements you dissolve them first in a fluid that color art sells then they're multi-task multi-purpose but resin art will never be there's nothing you can do to this to make it mix into the acrylic pouring world however you can make an alcohol ink out of it so multi-purpose in that way All right, I'm not going to do too much talking through these uh, next two paintings. I'll just let you watch the process. Just know that I'm covering the surface here with some clear KS resin. And you're going to see now, as I mentioned, about that graininess. Do you see all the sparkle? That's what that graininess is. It's nothing wrong. It's just the sparkle sitting there waiting to be brought back to life with some type of a finish. So it, it's just beautiful. It, it makes me happy to look at. And I'm sure that, you know, you have your own special thing that makes you happy to look at, whether it be just the color or, or the canvas. I mean, <laughs> it could be anything, but for me, it's that sparkle. So now I'm working with two colors, the Purple Galaxy Resin Art color and my Liquid Gold Gold. And all I'm doing is putting it on the stick and dragging it through the clear resin. That is all I am doing. So I just ran some simple lines through there. You can see all that beautiful shimmer. Wow. And this area here is so 3D. You'll never be able to see it on camera. Well, maybe look at that. It just looks like you can pick it up, you know? So 
It's definitely something I love to do and I think you'll enjoy it also. So there's that one. Now let's see what we can do with this uh, ocean mess I got on my hands. <laughs> Okay, so for this one, I'm going to be using white, uh, Angel White by La Res. Again, all of these colors I'm going to tell you about are in the description, artisttilldeath.com. There's a coupon. Then I'm using one called uh, Moody Seas by Color Obsession. What these colors are, they are resin tints. So you literally just need a little swatch of it on the end of a stick and it will color that whole cup this one is called dark turquoise they also have uh opaque colors these are transparent because i want to be able to see underneath this here the only one that's opaque is the white uh and then these are also tints that they sell and you just put a couple of drops into your resin and i'll do that when i'm mixing it up so you don't use a lot of product when it comes to that. So I have that. I'm going to add my Milky Way in to my clear resin to spread over the entire thing. It's going to be so much shimmer. You're going to see this from outer space. Hope you have a pair of sunglasses. Okay, very simple, you'll see. I have poured a little bit of clear resin into the cups here that had the color. Into here, I put some drops of that ink. I have a little bit of clear here. I'm going to put just a little bit of the Milky Way into the clear and a little bit into the tinted color. So what this Milky Way will do, we'll make it into a pearl. How pretty is that? And watch this. It's a violet, pearl, all different colors, sparkles in it. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. That is Milky Way. Absolutely gorgeous. Can be used in resin or acrylic pouring. All right, and then I'll show you the difference. Oh, there's a hair on my cup. I'll show you the difference of it mixed into a color. Now this is going to be pearlescent. That is gorgeous. Hopefully I can see the painting underneath still. <laughs> I may have added a little bit too much. I sometimes get carried away. So I'm just going to mix my colors in here. That is the Moody Seas color, which I can equal to a blue-black indigo acrylic paint. And then the second one was uh, dark turquoise. So... Here we go. I'm putting the clear with the Milky Way mixed in and the blue ink that I used with the Milky Way mixed in. And I'm kind of just blending them together with my hands through the entire piece, having the more clear area down by the shoreline. Then I'm going to come in with my colors and just draw some, some basic, like where I want the, the color of the water to be like the waves, if you get what I mean. So you can kind of just drag it through wherever you want to have some depth and some color. Uh, the most important part of it is the white because that's where your actual waves are going to be, where the white is. So I kind of make these sideways Vs sometimes and that helps create an actual overflow like the the wave is crashing over itself and you with the heat you want to push forward and backward forward and backward and you'll see you'll get a nice movement like a wave before i show you the final results of these two paintings i want to talk to you about something i promised to talk to you about in the last video and i forgot so i did an acrylic pour over the toilet bowl tank of my toilet 
And there were a ton of people that reached out to me and said they wanted to do the same thing but couldn't because they rented. So I went on Home Depot and Lowe's and I did a search for toilet tank cover replacements. And to my eyes appeared tons of different brands and covers for toilet bowl tanks. So if you are a renter and you want to do that project, go on to Home Depot or Lowe's, look up your brand of toilet and get yourself a replacement cover. So this way you are able to take the original off, decorate your new one that you just bought for between $25 and $60 is what I found. And then put it on your toilet. This way, if you move, you have the original packed away somewhere safe. You can replace it. You won't get in trouble with your landlord. All will be well. So this is Moody Seas. I love it. Look at the sparkle. You can still see the background. I am thrilled beyond thrilled <laughs> with this painting. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. Let me tell you, I'm going to give you the dry results next, so stay tuned. If you are on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, go into the description, click on my links, and make sure you follow me there. I uh, release different types of artwork on there and tips and all kinds of things. Plus, we have a Facebook group that you could join and share your artwork with us, so Click on that United We Pour Fluid Art Group link and join our family. So here it is up on the wall. Absolutely gorgeous. I am in love with it. If anything, if anything, I may do one more clear layer with a little bit of waves, but maybe not. Maybe just a clear layer to top coat it and be done with it. But look at this sparkle. She is a beauty. Now, yes, I covered up more of that paper than I wanted to, but the point is, is that I poured on paper and it worked. So go ahead, go get yourself some thick scrapbooking paper with some sparkle in it from Michael's or from Hobby Lobby, wherever you shop and give it a go. Here is the second painting, came out beautiful. Again, the sparkle the uniqueness of the painting. It's just something totally different than what we're used to seeing. And in the art world, different and unique is key. Also be sure to click that like button, comment below. It helps my channel tremendously. And uh, if you can subscribe, if you're not subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it little red subscribe word next to the title of the video is all you got to click on. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here to support me. I love you all and happy pouring.